Right from the moment she released, Ganyu became the strongest on-field carry in Genshin Impact. There were a few reasons for that. While in hindsight her team damage output was nothing special, it was still considered very impressive back in the day, so a period where teams such as National weren't a popular thing yet, which meant her competition bodded down to the likes of Diluc Vaporize and other teams on that level that felt just straight up inferior compared to what a Morgana Ganyu team could do. It wasn't only the raw damage itself, that was actually the lesser part. The thing that made the team special was its consistency in grouping all types of opponents in one spot thanks to Venti, and then stun locking them through freeze, guaranteeing AoE damage at unparalleled degrees back in the day. A lot has changed since then, in a mostly negative way for Ganyu. Not only enemies are harder to group with Venti now in general, with boss opponents posing the biggest issues since they can't even be frozen, but the team's DPS now just looks below average if compared to many meta teams. Part of the issue is that the team received no particular upgrade. Sure, somebody like Kazuha allowed to diversify the core a bit by increasing Ganyu's raw damage ceiling by a lot, but Ganyu's prime days are long gone at this point, since the Freeze team is really only at its best when Venti can abuse a specific abyss stage through his grouping and allow Ganyu to maximize her AoE properties as a result. When the team works, it still feels great, but at this point enemy types in a base are diverse enough that you're rarely going to face 3 straight chambers with favorable matchups for Ganyu. Another part of the issue compared to the past is that in those days, enemies HP thresholds were low enough that Ganyu could clear a wave before Mona's Hydro application ended, meaning they would remain frozen for the entire damage window. Now enemies are more durable, so there are more situations where they get out of freeze and ragdoll you. Somebody like Ayaka doesn't suffer from this issue, since most of her rotation damage is compressed in her short burst damage window, but in Ganyu's case, it puts a higher percentage of her personal damage in jeopardy. As things are now, I'd even consider Melt Ganyu a more consistent option for her. This team has never been considered the most reliable, as removing Freeze from Ganyu means adding a lot of unpredictability to the fights, since she hits at almost 2 seconds of intervals and can't really control opponent's positioning in any way through staggering or other means. Still, it pushes her own damage output to theoretically higher ceiling than Morgana, and unlike that team, it doesn't particularly suffer from the bad situations I highlighted before. In particular, it makes Ganyu at least decent in single target boss rooms, which is a big plus. All in all, Ganyu hasn't completely fallen off and is still a pretty good character overall, but she's a case of a character that released in a perfect context and is now suffering from the fact that things don't align as perfectly for her as they once did. Hu Tao is a character I already talked about in the past. Specifically, I stated that in my opinion she's overrated, but let me reiterate that I only think she's overrated by the group of people that believes she's still straight up superior compared to the vast majority of on-field carries. Honestly, Hu Tao is still one of the best carries in the game, and compared to Ganyu, she definitely aged more gracefully. As opposed to her, she didn't rely on a perfect context to thrive in the meta, since her issues were just as clear back in the day as they are now. She's perfect for single target situations, while AoE situations are more inconsistent, and partially depend on how you as the player handle those fights. A radical change for Hu Tao, however, However, is that in many situations she is not a hyper carry anymore. While a long time ago the key to high level Hu Tao results was a double pyro composition that could allow you to swirl the pyro element, something that pushed Hu Tao's personal damage to maximum levels, she now has team options that put less execution related stress on players while still dishing out relatively comparable team damage. 
I'm talking about the double hydro compositions with Yelan, which distribute team damage more evenly throughout the characters you're using and make Hu Tao's team damage contribution fall below 50%. Not only this makes the team easier to use, but it also lowers the need of hyper investing on Hu Tao to achieve great results. Still, it's honestly hard to talk about her without mentioning the massive boosts she gains from using Staff of Homa and activating her Constellation 1, which are very noticeable even on non-hyper teams. If I had to guess, most people that main Hu Tao have at least one of them, as those are generally considered the gateways to truly incredible Hu Tao performance these days, as at that point the single target output of the team becomes so high that their lack of AoE is less of a big flaw and more of an inconvenience. Basically, Hu Tao now has more options to do well on teams even at low investment, while still mostly retaining her high investment value, so she hardly could have aged any better, honestly. Talking about Xiao objectively isn't easy, because his value varies wildly depending on whether you have Constellation 6 Farazan or not. While it's true that even lower Constellation Farazans work, like Constellation 2, the energy issues Xiao suffers from without the huge particle generation boost Farazan gets from her Constellation 6 makes the fate suspect in those cases, and frankly makes non-Constellation 6 Farazan just a tiny bit better than other Anemo batteries for Xiao. On the other hand, Constellation 6 Farazan Xiao is a whole another beast, and I dare say he's so good that Farazan pretty much turned back the clock for him, and relative to the meta is pretty much in the same spot as he was at his release, so a very strong AoE character that can perform very well even in single target situations thanks to his raw damage. A big point of debate for Xiao with Constellation 6 Farazan is that if you have her, you probably have a Wanderer as well, likely at Constellation 1 or 2. Since it's also an Animo carry, that scenario theoretically lowers the value of a Xiao on your account, but honestly, Xiao still has some clear advantages over Wanderer that make the comparisons between the two quite balanced. Wanderer can't really match Xiao in wide AoE situations, and the latter even has higher damage per rotation than the former, thanks to his longer windows of damage. This creates an interesting paradox, because while Xiao can do more damage throughout a 25 seconds window, his DPS is generally lower. Basically, if Wanderer can finish a room before 20 seconds, he's probably going to do better thanks to his higher DPS. If he can't, then think become more even, as Wanderer teams have around 7 seconds of downtime before he can go on field again, a window during which Xiao can keep doing damage and potentially finish a room. Aside from this direct comparison, Xiao with Constellation 6 Farazan is just a character that stacks up to the rest of the meta incredibly well, and I wouldn't say even somebody like Hu Tao, who has been in a much better spot until Farazan's release, is particularly better than him, if at all. In fact, even in speedruns at non whale level, Xiao is consistently one of the best options. I want to emphasize non whale level, because that's both a good and a bad thing for him. He is a character that reaches his potential on a team wide scale once he has access to Constellation 6 Farazan, and can't benefit from any particular upgrade investment wise until he activates his own Constellation 6 as well. All in all, he is a character that will perform incredibly well, granted you can meet that one big Farazan condition, but he will probably feel comparatively weaker than other characters at Dolphin level investment, so Constellation 2 characters, since he doesn't have access to the same big upgrades others have at that point. I'm done for today. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time!